These recordings released by Concord show the capture of a heavily damaged ship found drifting a few days ago in the system of Rainilles. No information has been released on the whereabouts or the fate of its crew, but within hours of being boarded, the ship was towed to the Concord Directive Enforcement Department headquarters in Ulai. There it remained quarantined outside the station for 48 hours before it was deemed safe to dock. Little is known about the crew or the builders of the ship at this time except the name Triglavian, possibly connected to the frequent occurrence of the number three in their designs. For the past month, damaged drifter fleets have been mysteriously emerging around various jump gates in New Eden. Appearing in previously unseen numbers, these drifter fleets have been nicknamed Death Balls by Capsuleers. Passive unless provoked, the drifter ships are heavily damaged after some unknown engagements. This has been the cause of speculation about who or what damaged those ships. The Arataka Research Consortium has been the leading element in the drifter investigations, mercilessly attacking them at every opportunity. While these unprovoked attacks on the drifters have raised controversy, they have also been justified as they have provided clues to what has been happening to the drifter fleets. Trinary data vaults have been salvaged from the drifter wrecks. The data they hold is partly corrupted and believed to be Triglavian. The Arataka Research Consortium has been quite successful in extracting fragmented footage from this data and stitching it together. The footage shows drifters engaging Triglavian ships. It is due to these efforts and consequent questions raised by Capsuleers that Concord has finally come forward to shed some light on these events. In the short amount of time since its capture, the Triglavian ship has provided Concord with a wealth of information. Equipped with what has been named a filament device, it allows cruiser-sized ships to enter what Professor Mayer of Concord Deep Space Research calls abyssal dead space. After observing energy spikes spread across New Eden, he has theorized that these are potential entry points to self-sustained pockets of space and time, abyssal dead space. In a daring experiment, an Enforcer-class cruiser was fitted with the filament device to test this theory. Upon activation, the ship instantaneously opened up and entered one of the countless millions of abyssal dead space pockets. This experiment confirmed Professor Mayer's theories, and as also predicted, the entry point closed behind the traveling ship, removing all hope of rescue in case of emergency. Initial observations of the pocket showed that it was surrounded by a harsh flux of space-time. Any ship venturing too far from its center would be crushed by the gravitational forces. Hazardous phenomenon were also detected within the pocket, requiring careful navigation to avoid damage or even destruction of the ship if flying into or too close to these hazards. Almost immediately, the expedition came under attack from three Triglavian ships. Frigate-sized, the vessels were easily identified as Triglavian by the distinctive sphere of energy. This sphere is in fact an engine for a weapon called Entropic Disintegrator. Operated completely differently from any existing capsuleer weaponry, it needs a baseline of capacitor to initiate a continuous beam of energy aimed at its target. Initial damage inflicted is limited, but quickly its energy levels ramp up, increasing its damage capability significantly. Once it reaches full capacity, its damage output is higher than any other known weapons of similar size. The Concorde cruiser received considerable damage before managing to destroy the attacking frigates, but due to the damages sustained, communications with the ship became sporadic throughout the remainder of the expedition. With no way to turn around to safety, the crew had no choice but to press on, going deeper into the dead space, traveling through at least three pockets via what looks like some sort of transportation gates. Twelve minutes after entering the abyssal dead space, the last transmission was received from the expedition. Engaged once again by ships of Triglavian design, this time the cruiser was clearly outmatched by the larger vessels. While fragmented, it seems the Concord cruiser tried desperately to limit the damage received by the entropic disintegrators by repeatedly trying to move out of their range before their damage output reached maximum. But since the safe area within the pocket is limited, it kept getting cornered by the Triglavian ships. Each time the cruiser was forced to make another run past the Triglavians, it took incredible damage whenever any of the beams managed to reach its optimal output. 
Eventually, the cruiser hull was breached, and a fraction of a second later, its signal was lost. Data from the expedition is still being analyzed, but preliminary findings show that the cruiser traveled through three distinct pockets that all shared similar environments. It is believed that the gate seen in the third pocket would have provided a safe passage back to the point where the cruiser entered the abyssal dead space. What is interesting is that the footage collected from the drifter wrecks in the past weeks showed at least five different forms of environments, which clearly indicates that more is yet to be discovered. Furthermore, the footage also shows drifters engaging triglavian ships in the abyssal dead space, so it is only safe to assume that drifters will very likely be encountered in future expeditions. Another interesting observation made during the expedition were readings of high concentrations of biotech that has been named mutaplasmids. Also found in the captured Triglavian cruiser, Concord researchers have been experimenting with the substance and discovered it can have immense but unpredictable effects on existing technology. In the first experiment, mutaplasmids were allowed to bond with a standard micro-warp drive resulting in vastly improved performance and reduced capacitor need while taking some penalty in the form of power consumption. When conducting the exact same experiment again, the results were completely different. Performance decreased while also seeing increased capacitor and power requirements. Subsequent testing has yielded everything from extremely positive to extremely negative results on the modules tested. Once the mutaplasmids have bonded to the modules, then these changes become irreversible which makes use of the substance a risky gamble. But it is obvious that if this material can be harvested in large quantities, then it is set to revolutionize current space technology. This is Alton Havery, reporting for The Scope.